conversation this morning with Andy Small. Andy Small is a friend of mine. He, he's a, the stockroom manager in the chemistry department. And he's also teaching a UNIV 101 class this semester. And we were talking about Randy Posh's um, video. And he told me a story about a friend of his who he was having a conversation with one day. And his friend said, well, you, when I get up in the morning, I ask myself, am I ready to die today? You know, that seems kind of a, a really dark way to face the day, the first thing to start off with. But in retrospect, it's an important question. He was not looking at it as, all right, is, am I going to be ready if something terrible happens to me? It's more a question of, have I taken care of the important things in my life so that if I were to die today for some reason, is everything else going to be all right? And that's an important way to look, I think, at what your priorities are. Uh, another thing that uh, Randy Posh talked about was legacy, what you leave behind. And I think the top ten lists that Kevin and I have come up with address that issue as well. So without any further ado, we're going to jump right into our top ten lists. Uh, we compared our lists last night, and there's quite a bit of similarity and overlap in some of them, but the last two points on both of our lists are actually combined. The two lists kind of dovetail very nicely. So we're going to do a tag team here, but the last two items we actually had in common on our list. All right, my first one is traffic. Okay, seeing the world, all right, going out, experiencing new places and new things, seeing new people. Yes, it's a tremendous experience. It will broaden your horizons. It will teach you many lessons, but among the lessons that it's taught me, and I've traveled to India, I've traveled to, I'll talk more about India later, uh, I've traveled to South America and many other places, one of the things it's done is made me appreciate the things that I have that a lot of other people in the world don't. I think it's important, especially for younger people, to experience that as early as possible. If you've got a chance to travel someplace else, someplace exotic, see how the rest of the world lives. It will give you a much finer appreciation of the things that you have, and you'll, you'll be in a position where you can count your blessings every day instead of complaining about the things you don't have. Uh, but the whole idea of traveling, you can view life as traveling, as a journey. Uh, and the types of things that you experience when you're on that journey are equally important as the types of things you experience when you're traveling around the world. Uh, you, know, you hear people talking about day-to-day -day experiences and there's something negative that they're having to deal with, whether it's in a relationship or whatever, and you hear the phrase, I don't want to go there. The question is, why not? Yes, it'll be difficult. Yes, it may be painful. But those are where you learn the most important lessons, is facing things that are difficult. And when you face a, a situation where you really don't want to go there, maybe the next time you should ask yourself, why don't I want, want to go there? Will I be a better person if I do take the chance and, and make that difficult journey to go someplace that is emotionally or psychologically difficult? It, it'll be a great opportunity for growth. So, that's my number 10. Jeff? Following right up on that, my number 10 is be thankful for what you have. You know, there are times in life where life really does suck, but then you think about it, does it really suck that much? I mean, here I am, you know, I've been through, I've been through cancer. That obviously, for a lot of people, they would say that sucks. I would disagree, but I'll get to that later. One of the things I will, okay, one of the things I did learn going through having cancer is I have a profound respect for women and what they go through every month. I had an intestinal infection, and I had it for maybe three or four days once, and that was hell. I was on opiates in bed asleep half the time because it was so bad. I have an extreme respect for all of you women out there. Thank you for not taking it out on the rest of the world because you deserve it. <laughs> to me, life is like a roller coaster. Now, how many of you have been on a roller coaster? Now stop and think about it. How many of the people in the world have never even seen a roller coaster? Millions, actually I'd say billions, have never even seen a roller coaster, have never been given the chance to feel that, just the, 
intense rush of adrenaline, the amazing feeling that is roller coasters. And here we are, we live in this country. Yeah, we have problems. But really, our problems are not that bad. Life has its ups and downs, its dark tunnels and loops that just kind of turn you around and leave you disoriented. But in the end, you still have so much. I've been to India twice, and like Dad said, uh, going at an early age is, is an amazing experience. The first time I went was halfway through eighth grade when I was 13, I think. Uh, that changed my life. I don't know how many of you have seen Slumdog Millionaire, but every single scene in that movie, I can pretty much think of a time on my two trips to India where I have seen something like that. The poverty, just the, the desolation, the, all the people who have nothing. My very first night, or I guess the, the next morning, yeah, we're not gonna get into the first <laughs> night because that was one of the scariest experiences of my life, almost being completely taken advantage of by a stranger who probably would have killed us if we had decided oh, to go to his house. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your fault. You told him that we, it was our first time in India. But, and never do that. Never tell somebody in a foreign country it's your first time there. Well, what he said was, I'm from I'm the, the government, government I'm, I'm here, here to help. help. That's another <laughs> thing that should cue you into. This guy is not good. But the next morning, when we were driving to the hotel that we were supposed to be at the previous night, but for various reasons we didn't end up there, we passed thousands, literally thousands of people in the streets because they had no homeless shelters to go to. They were literally living in the gutter. They had the clothes on their back, and that was it. Honestly, I've been through chemotherapy. I've been through being told that I might not be alive in five years. But I think that living in this country, even with cancer, is better than what they have to go through. And whenever you face a situation where things are hard and things are tough, you don't know you, know, it, you find it hard to face the day when you wake up in the morning. You live in a country with running water, with electricity, with an amazing, well, the healthcare system is debatable, but with amazing doctors and amazing cures, and this is all available to you. Life is not that bad. There is always someone worse off than you. And now I'll hand it back over to Dad for number nine. Nine. All right, my number nine is take yourself seriously, because if you don't, nobody else will. Uh, at this age, you've got a lot of goals. And it's important that if you feel those goals are worth accomplishing, you need to take them seriously, and you need to make sure that other people are going to take you seriously. It's a motivational tool, if you will, to keep things in perspective, that if, if this is really what I want, Am I willing to work for it? So you have to take yourself seriously, but not too seriously. I can name any of the number of people that I know that I've met in my life that takes themselves so seriously that they, they can't have fun. They're held back by some sense of false pride, uh, by uh, concerns about what other people are going to think about them if they do something that maybe looks a little silly on first glance. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's no way to live your life. Okay, I'll give you an example. Um, some of you, is anybody here familiar with Mortarboard? And Mortarboard has got this fundraising activity that they've got on campus for uh, reading is leading. And they've asked several faculty members to kind of promote this in their classes. Uh, they're raising uh, money, monetary donations, and canned goods for the homeless shelter, et cetera. So it's kind of a competition among the different faculty members uh, in these different departments to raise as much as they can for this cause. Uh, the faculty member that raises the most donations has the reward, I guess, if you could call it a reward, of getting to dress up in a turkey suit uh, for a day. Uh, now, when one of my students came and asked me if I'd be willing to do this, you know, I didn't even think twice, and I don't know what that says about me. Uh, I spent enough of my time probably acting like a turkey that it probably wouldn't face me one way or the other to actually dress like one. But there are a lot of people that would not even consider this. Uh, 